whenever the laws of any state are broken, or when the welfare of its citizens is endangered, each state has a duly authorized organization that swings into action. It may be called the state militia, or the state police, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Enforcement agencies have rarely encountered criminals more vicious than Ralph Neal. On the morning of July 8th, he killed a guard, escaped from the state penitentiary, and paused in his flight only long enough to make a ruthless decision about his wounded companion. Lots of traffic for this time of morning. I have to keep running all the way. You make it? Just give me a second to rest this leg. The slug missed the bone all right, but it feels like it's still in there. The arrangements for the getaway were made by Matt Parker, brother of the convict Neil had slugged. You, Matt? Where's Jeff? He's dead. Never met it over the wall. All right, get in. There's some clothes in the back. That's why you get out. Here's about 20 bucks. Follow that highway. About a quarter of a mile, you'll come to a little town. Well, I'm going to the city with you. You've got nothing to say about it. Well, now, look. You take me into the city, there's a good hunk of donut for you. You try dropping me out here, you and I are going to have trouble. You got a gun? Well, I have. You're talking pretty big for a guy in your spot. Now, get out of here before I decide to give the cops a break. Here, take this stuff with you. An escaped convict is a deadly enemy. If he's as brutal and as cunning as Ralph Neal, he is never underestimated. Every law enforcement agency is alerted, including the highway patrol. The operation will be directed from whatever district the head of the patrol is at that time. All units been notified? Yes, sir. There's a further report coming in from the prison right now. Jeff Parker recaptured. Ralph Neal still at large. Last known to be on arm wearing prison garb. Supplemental description, six feet one. Of... Here, file these. Brown, Sergeant, come over here. We'll set up a Neal on this map. How can anyone break out of a prison like that? Anyone can't. Neal did. Neal usually gets what he wants. He had nothing to concentrate on 24 hours a day but escape. Well, he's starting from scratch. Yeah, and every job he's ever been mixed up with has been a shooting. He'll probably go for a gun fast. Better notify all units that any crime involving the theft of an auto, gun, clothes, or money will assume it to be Neil and follow it up immediately. He's going to move fast. We're going to have to move faster. Neil moved fast, all right. By 7.30 in the morning, he had already stolen a car. But he stole it from a rural community where people get up early. By 7.45, the owner missed it, reported it stolen, and the license number was immediately posted. It was just one of three stolen cars, but the time at which it was stolen and the distance from the prison definitely marked it as a possible. Why'd you ruin that tire, mister? You didn't run on them once they go flat. Can you? Fix me up with a good used tire, right quick? <laughs> no. Wait, I haven't got a used one this size in stock. Give you a good deal on a new one, though. Twenty-four fifty, and you'll be out of here in ten minutes. Okay, Pop. You sold me a tire. There you are, mister. Half a minute to spare. Well, Pop, I'm afraid I played a dirty trick on you. I don't want to lie about it, though. I knew I only had enough dough for a used tire, and I sent you the rest of the money from town. Okay. At least you didn't lie about it. I like an honest man. I guess I can trust you for the difference. Just give me some kind of identification. Your driver's license will do. Well, that's why I didn't have any money. I left my wallet home this morning. Everything's in it. OK, mister. Just show me the car registration for your name and address. No bill out of all the 
reports, there are only three that show possibilities. As far as time and distance are concerned, they're completely unrelated. State Patrol, would you repeat that, please? Edgemont Garage. Now, what did he do? You say you did get the license number. Would you give it to me, please? 2N, as in Nora, 38546. How old was the coupe? How long was he there? Can you give me a description of the man, sir? Yes, sir, I quite agree. Wise guys like that should be locked up. We'll do everything we can. Anybody near there? Yeah, Peterson. Get this out fast. Guy pulls into a gas station with a flat, buys a new tire, pays most of the money, then takes a powder. Says he has no identification, no wallet, and no license. Maybe this is nothing, but boy, the location sure fits in. Dan, that license number, it's on the hot sheet. Which one is it? That one, just southwest of the prison. Give me that description of Neil again, will you? Thanks. Well, there's nothing unusual about Neil's description. This could fit a lot of guys, including this character. Ralph Neal's prison clothes have just been picked up. Get time and place. Two miles southwest of the prison, 9.45. All right. We'll start operating. Throw up a roadblock fast. I want that whole area blocked off so tight a kiddie car couldn't get through. Ask the PD to cover what we can't. Now, Neal's going to know there's a roadblock. And if we leave one tiny opening, he's going to find it and get through. some trouble. We gotta change our plans. I might be throwing roadblocks up all over the place. Now, don't worry about me. I'll get through all right. I want to keep you on the outside of any roadblocks. Well, don't come all the way. There's a little place on the main highway about 20 miles north of town, the Golden Pheasant. Use the four door with a trunk rack on top so I can spot it real quick. Right. You see him. Twenty-one fifty to Colfax. Twenty-one fifty. Go ahead, Pete. Located old coop. License number two Nora, three eight five four six. Location twenty yards west of Highway Twenty Seven on Mill Lane. No check yet, but cars parked on the side of the road apparently abandoned. Pete, use caution. We believe Neil may have been driving that car. Don't worry, Dan. I promise to take my kids to the circus tonight. I'll shake it down and call back. Stand by. Ten four. Colfax to 2150. How about it, Pete? What'd you find? What's with Pete? I don't
don't know. He's had plenty of time to check that car. Try him again. Pete, can you read me? Colfax to 2150. Come in, Pete. Come in, 2150. Come in, 2150. Can you read me, Pete? Come in, Pete. Hit your mic button twice. Maybe his radio's dead. This is no time for maybes. I'm going up there. Have Stevens meet me out front. Send the nearest patrol car to Pete right away. If he gets there before I do, have him contact me car to car. Attention, 2112. Peterson is out of service just west of Highway 27 on Mill Lane. Check. Code 3. Stop by other cops. If they do stop us, they'll ask questions. Now, as far as you're concerned, everything's okay, everything's normal. You understand that? I'm gonna be in the back of this bus hiding. If you tip those cops, you'll never get out of that seat. It doesn't make any difference to me if I kill you or not. You play it smart, mister. You'll have supper with your wife and kids tonight. <laughs> like a smart girl. Now, you don't want to see that bus driver get hurt, do you? Mister, you better talk to these kids. Your life may depend on it. Margie, you get Billy to stop crying, hon. Billy, you'll do that for me, won't you? Y you kids are going to have to help me, otherwise... I can depend on you, can't I? <laughs> Peterson was in bad shape. The disappearance of his uniform and his car served to illustrate that Neil would be almost impossible to anticipate and that he now was in possession of a gun. Ambulance is on its way. How oh, is it pretty rough? He's still breathing. That's about all I can tell. I was able to stop the bleeding, but he was in awfully hard. Looks like a skull fracture. Anybody notify his wife? Not yet. She's still picking up the kids at school. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot he was going to take his kids to the circus tonight. Send him on the fingerprints on that jack will say Ralph Neal. You stay with Peterson until the ambulance gets here. Right. Go over to Highway 21 and join Carter. He's sitting all alone with nothing but a motor. Right. Car 2217 to car 2210. Come in, 2217. What's your 1020? Mill Road, west of Highway 27. Have just located Peterson's car parked on highway five miles south of your location. I'd stand by. I'll be right over there. Harris, do you get that transmission? Yes, sir. What time did you arrive? About eight minutes ago, just before I called you. How long do you figure the car's been here? I checked under the hood. Motor's still warm. I'm sure this guy we're chasing is Neil. We know he's brutal and smart, plenty smart, but this just doesn't make any sense. He's got a car in good shape and full of gas, yet he abandons it. Slugs a patrolman, steals his uniform and his patrol car, drives the car five miles and ditches it. I don't get it. Sure sounds crazy. No. This Neil's not crazy, believe me. This is the way he always operates. He's unpredictable. 
He's got some kind of a plan. We just haven't found it yet, that's all. Why are you slowing down? Kids get over the next side road. Well, not today they don't. Keep going. Policeman. Okay, mister, it's up to you whether you live or die. Margie, Billy, if anybody asks any questions, let Margie do all the talking. I understand, kids? Hi, Dorsey. What's going on? Hi, Les. Seen any suspicious characters on the highway? A man walking along the road or crossing it? Might have been wearing a patrolman's uniform. Nope. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen anybody on foot. Why, did you lose one of your boys? Just looking for a guy. Hey, what's the matter, young fella? You aren't afraid of me, are you? What's your name, Sonny? His name's Billy. He's my brother. He's got an awful tummy ache. It hurts him awful. He wants to get home quick. Oh. Okay, Les, take it away. Take it easy, Les. Exactly 35. Yeah, we'll make it 20. All right, turn left at this next road. Good yet? Why, do you think he's near here? It's gotta be, and he must be on wheels of some kind. He was reported 17 miles north of here an hour ago. I'll get it. Twenty-two fourteen. go ahead. Got a worried mother just off the highway, 10 miles north of you. Kids way overdue from school. Anyone there able to break loose and run it down? Good names and descriptions of those kids. Also get the name of the driver of the bus they were supposed to have been on. I think Neil was here and I let him get through. What do you mean? Well, you said Neil was 17 miles north of here about an hour ago. Yeah. That means at 35 miles an hour, he could have been here about a half hour ago. Just about that time, a school bus came through here with two kids on it. They were crying and scared. Said it was a stomach ache. You heard this call? Yeah. Kids were girl 10, boy 7, Margie and Billy. Driver was Les Wilkins, bus number 112. Attention all units, this is Dan Matthews. Neil was reported seen in this area in a school bus. Now all units to the south, break the roadblock and head north. All units east and west, keep moving until you hit Highway 38. Block every entrance to the highway and stop and search every car, whether it's suspicious or not. Now keep an eye out for that school bus. And under no conditions, open fire on it. There are two kids on board. Keep me posted. I'm going directly south until I run into the school bus or run into another patrol unit coming north. Now you fellows go south and check every side road, every one of them. Neil's only about a half hour from the city. If he ever gets there, he'll be swallowed up in five minutes. Take off. Check. Okay, boys, let's go. Okay, hold it. Put on the brake. Leave the motor running. This is the end of the line. You getting off here? You are. Okay, you two. You go to the back window and keep a sharp lookout for Indians. Hurry up. Go on. Right on your
your seat. Get out. What about the kids? You don't get going, you won't care what about anything. Hey, kids, come here, quick. The driver just fell off the bus and I think he's hurt. Now you better stay with him. I'll go get a doctor and be right back. Come on, come on. Oh, you stay with him. He might need you pretty badly. Attention all units. This is Dan Matthews. I've located the school bus. It's at the intersection of Highway 101 and Medford Road. It's parked in back of the Golden Pheasant Restaurant. Close in on this point immediately. The bus appears to be deserted. All units acknowledge receipt of this message. the blue suit, hold it. I'm a police officer. Put your hands on top of your head and come over here, fast. Do as he says. I'll stop you in a second. Come on out here. Now I'm telling you to hold it, mister. I want the keys of that car and I want them fast. Take them out of your pocket, drop them on the ground. Keys won't do you any good near. You won't get very far in a flat. You're going to start hearing sirens in a couple of minutes. You people in the doorway, get back inside. There's trouble out here. Somebody may get shot. Okay, copper. Unless you want to see this innocent bystander shot, you'll throw out your gun and the keys of that patrol car. Remember, you can't get me without hitting him. No, Neil, you won't shoot him. He's your shield, and the dead weight doesn't make a good shield. Well, maybe you're right, copper. Maybe I won't shoot him, but neither will you. And if you don't throw out those keys, I'm coming in to get them. Just move a little closer. I'll be able to get a shot at you. Play it cool, Vince boy. Play it cool. We'll be out of this jam in a couple of minutes. Well, how about it, Copper? You ain't going to get a shot at me. And I'm going to keep coming in until you throw out those keys or I take them off your dead body. Now, which will it be? Ralph, he's not kidding. Oh, so it's Ralph now. You know this fellow pretty well. You ought to know him well enough to know he's playing you for a sucker. Those are the sirens I was telling you about. In a couple of minutes, this place is going to be crawling with riot guns, and there won't be much left when they get through blasting. Play it smart, Mr. Neal's wanted for murder. You're not. Pull away from him. He can't hold you with one hand. Vince, you try to pull loose from me, and I'll put a slug right in the middle of your back. No, he won't, Vince. He's too smart for that. He knows his only hope is to shoot me before I shoot him. Here come the riot guns, Vince. Is that the way you want it? Are you all right, Dan? Yeah, I'm fine. You better check Neil. He's probably in bad shape. Looks like he's all through. You better call the coroner. That's his playmate in the blue suit. Take him down to headquarters and book him. I found the bus driver and the two kids. Cod will take care of them. Take care of the rest of the details, too, will you, Sergeant? I want to see if I can get back to town in time to take Peterson's kids to the circus.
do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Broderick Crawford. I hope you've enjoyed the program we brought to you. And you'll be with us again next week at the same time.